Hi, welcome to Abby's Den. I'm Abby and today I am looking at the Jaguar 2015 DF Overlocker Machine. Now the DF stands for Differential Feet. Now that's standard on a lot of overlockers so we don't need to see that DF anymore. But I want to talk to you about this machine because it's got some features that a lot of the over overlockers in this price band don't have. So the first thing you always consider when you're looking at an overlocker is not the brand name. With an overlocker, you want to look for a variety of different features. The first thing you want to look at is the threading because there's four threads to use on an overlocker and that can be overwhelming for you if you've never used an overlocker before. If you have, it's still a big issue. I'm well versed on overlockers experience. I can you know i calibrate them tensions on them i adjust the timings on them i can fix them i can i know them inside and out so to me it's still important to make sure that this machine can thread easily and i want to show you this so here's a trim tray if i take this off it's a bit of a nightmare this is something i'm not really uh, thrilled with but if i pull this sliding door forward what happens is you can see the thread map that thread map is on most overlockers not not all of them because um i don't know why but you have a an easy threading system here and it's exposed but if i switch this button down and pull this what it exposes is everything so all the guides so you have no guides thread guides hiding underneath um this section here which usually doesn't move at all you, your thread guide under the needle is exposed and you can reach it. You don't need special gadgets like you might do with another brand. You don't have a fast system, which you do with another brand. It's just there. <laughs> and that to me is really amazing, actually, because it means I've not got to be a contortionist. You, If you have difficulties with your hands, with your fingers, I sometimes um, have fat finger syndrome for example and I struggle some days just to thread up the machine this will eliminate that problem it's a great machine and easy to thread the second thing about this machine the threading system is the threads don't overlap now in most overlockers you need to thread a certain way so you either have to do left right left right which is you know something I teach to a lot of the kids because the, the overlockers we use in class um, makes it easier for them to remember that way but in this overlocker it doesn't matter which way you thread you can thread the upper looper first or the lower looper first because they don't cross over each other they just feed and channel through on their own and then the next one feeds and channel through there's no overlapping which means you can't get it wrong so that's a winner already because this bit is exposed it's made Moving the knife easier, even from behind, I can do this, whoops, I can do that really easily. And that makes it easier for people who struggle with their fingers um, to be able to uh, move the knife out of the way if you don't need it. It's really easy, I found it so easy to change because they have access to um, your knife really easily and the threading system but the needles can change using a screwdriver which they provide and is stored away in, inside the door here um, rather than an allen key if you lose your allen key here you can access the finger to adjust the width of your loops so if you take the finger out you literally just pull it out just grab hold of it pull it out and you can hide it away in this little section here there we go and it fits inside there okay um and then i can close that away and that is it that's my old hem settings i want to make sure that the lower looper i want to make sure the lower looper is tight so that it can pull my fabric round when i'm doing a rolled hem so i want it to be pulled under um, you can reduce the stitch length if you want to. You can reduce the stitch width if you want to. You can have single needle, uh, which is best for rolled hem. So what I'm going to do is just remove the left needle. So unthread the machine. You want to unthread it um, after you take the needle out so you don't lose the needle inside. But you won't lose it inside because you can't. It just falls straight down. That's brilliant. It's genius. 
I love brilliant machines. A rolled hem, and if you put the finger back in, you get a normal flat uh, overlock. But they also have an extra finger in here in the storage area, which is quite wide. Can I get it out? It's a lot wider and it allows for wider loops. Why do you need wider loops? Well, when, when you're doing sort of thick fabrics like tweed, um, I'll leave that there for a minute, like tweed, or if you're doing quilting and you've got a big wad of fabric, you want to be able to get um, a nice big loop around the edge of your fabric so that your tension isn't too tight on the stitching. And that is allowed by this machine. This machine gives you that ability. And threading up again your needles, you have got a threading um, guide here. So you get a threader. The instructions are rubbish. I'm going to add that here because when I tried to find out how to use the thread, inside the hole, um, I couldn't find And the hook inside that area there goes inside the needle. And all I need to do is just hoop that thread around fiddly and then it will catch the thread and pull it to the back like that. So differential feed ranges from 2 to 0.7 that's a good range. Some machines do go down to 0.5 I was a bit disappointed that this one doesn't go down to 0.5 but when I searched on um, some let me see if I find it but when I stitched on some jersey, the differential, uh, you know, it came out beautiful. It was straight and I was using differential feed of one. I didn't actually alter it and I got a beautiful straight line. And when I did that um, flat lock on, so a two thread flat lock on a jersey fabric there, it was fine. I, I didn't get a wavy. You can see there, I haven't got a wavy line. So differential feed on one was fine. Um, so it doesn't perhaps need to go all the way down to 0.5. So the next thing, looking at different settings were stitches as well. The stitches go all the way up to five. Some machines or most machines only go to a stitch width, uh, stitch length of four. Thin enough fabric, you, you tend to go for a smaller uh, stitch to keep them together. Um, the next thing was the knife setting. The knife setting is fantastic. Again, it goes all the way down to a four millimeter cut. So it goes up to seven millimeters and all the way down to four. Again, it's typically a five millimeter, but actually in the instruction, doesn't say four, it says it actually cuts down to 3.8. Because if you're cutting a, say, a chiffon skirt um, or a dance, you know, something floaty, you want it to be um, lightweight. So you want less fabric on your rolled hem. So it flows really beautifully when you're dancing. Um, and that's a really good uh, feature. So a lot of knives only go down to five. This one goes down to 3.8. Again, that's a nice feature. It is a heavy machine and that's what you want. If you're going to be dealing with heavy fabrics, you want this machine to stay in its place. You don't want it dancing around on your table. Some of these lightweight machines, they're great. You can carry them, but they dance around on the machine. Uh, they dance around on your table. This one stays firmly in its place. And if you're working on lots of jersey, for example, you're making lots of baby clothes, um, to sell, you want this machine to stay in its place. So if you're doing lots of curves, you don't want the machine to judder because your curves, your circle, say your wash pads, you want them to be nice and circular. You don't want uh, the machine to be juddering up and down because that affects the result again. And again, with this seam guide, it's just move it over until I get to the point where I can see the marking for my left needle and that's there if i place that seam guide there and then i can sew so it marked a seam allowance and i cut the fabric according to the seam allowance using the guides here both in metric and imperial on on the guide here and the seam allowance measure there um and i got a really nice cut so that's really important. 
So what else is there? I just think this machine's brilliant. <laughs> My two thread flat lock came out beautiful. I've never had a two thread flat lock as great as this. I've got to be honest, I've not tried it on the necky or the singer, so I need to do that next and um, I'll give it a go. But this has come out so beautiful. Again, when you're making dancewear, when you're making underwear, when you're making your bras, you're making your um, dance costume, when you're making baby clothes, you don't want to have a seam on the inside of your fabric. You just want a nice flat seam. And this machine, again, like I said, it changed from a four thread overlock straight down to a two thread uh, flat lock really easily because the flat lock gadget here is really easy to use if i can grab that out it's just a piece of metal you can see it's just a piece of metal and not a wire and um, those wires are really fiddly to get in um it was really easy to install just literally just clips in there was, and because the whole machine is exposed you're not having to fight your way into the right place this machine uh, to me, from both an engineer's, mechanic and dressmaker's point of view, not both, but from a dressmaker's, mechanic's and engineer's point of view, it's been designed beautiful as an engineer. I think it's really thought about. They really thought about a lot of the features. As a mechanic, if I'm going to repair this machine, I know it's going to be a pleasure to service, and it has been, which is why, as a dressmaker, I am really considering getting one of these for me. All right, I think that's that machine, and I'll be looking at the little sewing machine and overlocker when it comes out soon, so watch out for those videos, and I will see you soon. Take care.